In this video, we're going to focus on drawing structures within organic chemistry. Now, there's a few things that you need to know. So let's go over elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Carbon has four valence electrons, and as a result, it needs four more to get to eight. So carbon likes to form four bonds. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. It's in group 5A of the periodic table and so it needs three more electrons to get to eight so nitrogen typically likes to form three bonds. Oxygen has six valence electrons and needs two more to get to eight so it likes to form two bonds. Fluorine has seven valence electrons and it likes to form one bond. So the other halogens like chlorine, bromine, iodine, they like to form one bond typically. Elements like sulfur, selenium, usually like to form two bonds. So you're going to see that trend um, throughout organic chemistry. Now carbon, it likes to form four bonds, so typically it looks like this. Nitrogen, which likes to form three bonds, usually has one lone pair, because it still needs eight electrons. Oxygen, which likes to form two bonds, usually has two lone pairs. And fluorine, which likes to form one bond, typically has three lone pairs. Now let's say if we want to draw the Lewis structure for CH3, CH3. This is a condensed structure. This is the same as ethane, which can be written as C2H6. C2H6 is the molecular formula of ethane. Now, we can see that the carbon atoms are connected to each other. And hydrogen, hydrogen is in the first group of the periodic table, and it's also in the first row. It has one valence electron, and because it's in the first row, it can only have up to two, which means that hydrogen only needs one bond to get the two electrons that it needs. So hydrogen will always form one bond. So we have three hydrogens on the first carbon, so we can put it around it. And we have three hydrogens on the second carbon because it's CH3. And so this is how you can draw the Lewis structure for ethane. As you can see, every carbon atom has four bonds, which is the usual case for carbon. Now, what about this one, CH2, CH2? How can you draw the Lewis structure for this particular compound? Feel free to pause the video and try it yourself. So... This is C2H4, which is an alkene. Alkenes have the general formula CnH2n if it contains one, um, one alkene functional group. So we have the two carbon atoms in the middle, and there's two hydrogens. The first carbon atom has two hydrogens, and the second carbon atom also has two. But we know that carbon likes to form two bonds. So what kind of bond do we have in the middle? Is it a single bond, double bond, or a triple bond? We know it has to be a double bond because each carbon has two bonds. They need two more to get to eight. I mean, two more to have four bonds, which is which equates to eight electrons. Each bond represents two electrons. So this is ethene. It's an alkene that has one double bond. Alkenes are said to be unsaturated because you can add hydrogen to it. Alkanes are saturated. Now, what if you have the formula HCCH? How would you draw the Lewis structure? So we have our two carbon atoms. It is a hydrogen on each side. Now, so far each carbon atom has one bond. To get to four, it needs three more, which means that we need to put a triple bond in the middle. And that's how you can draw the structure. This is an alkyne. Alkynes have triple bonds. Specifically, this is called ethyne. When you think of ethane, ethane has two carbons. Methane is one, ethane is two, propane has three carbons, butane has four, pentane has five, hexane has six, heptane has seven, octane has eight, nonate has nine, decane has ten. So this is ethyne. Now, the common name of this structure is called acetylene. It's very common in alkyne reactions. Now what about this one? CH3, CH2, 
CH3. How can you draw the Lewis structure for this compound? This is called propane because it has three carbons and it's an alkane. Now the first three carbons are attached to each other. The first carbon has three hydrogens. The one in the middle is a CH2. It has two hydrogens. And the one at the end has three hydrogens. So that's the Lewis structure for propane. Now what about this one? CH3, CH, CH3, CH2, CH3. So before we draw the Lewis structure, let's expand it. What this really means is that you have a CH3 and attached to the CH, there's a CH3 that comes off it. CH3 is always at the end. It's never in the middle. CH2s, however, are in the middle. So notice that we have a CH3 at the end. So anytime you see a CH3, it's coming off something. And the CH2, the CH2 is always in the middle. And whenever you see a CH, it splits off into three directions. So now what we could do, we could expand it into a Lewis structure. So we have a carbon, 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 and another carbon. And just fill each carbon with hydrogens until every carbon has four bonds. So that's how you can draw the Lewis structure for that compound. Now what about converting it to a line structure? So we had four carbons and we had a methyl that came out. So this is the CH3, this is another CH3, and here's the CH3. In the middle, where it splits off into three directions, that's a CH. And when it splits off into two directions, one, two, that's a CH2. Let's try this example. Let's say if we have a CH3, CH2 times 4, and then a carbon with uh, three CH3s. So let's expand the condensed structure. So what this means is that we have a CH3 and there's four CH2s. And then we have a carbon which is connected to three CH3s. So I'm pretty sure you know how to draw the Lewis structure. So we're going to convert it to a line structure. So the longest chain has seven carbon atoms. So this is two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now on this carbon is two CH3s. We have a methyl on top and a methyl on the bottom. So that's how you can convert it into a line structure. Now how can you draw the Lewis structure for CH3OCH3? This is called an ether. An ether has a general formula ROR. -R. So let's start with the oxygen. The oxygen is attached to two carbons, and oxygen has two lone pairs on it. And then each carbon has three hydrogens. So that's how you draw the Lewis structure for dimethyl ether. The reason why it's called dimethyl is because there's a methyl on both sides. There's two methyls. Di means two, tri means three, tetra means four. So this is dimethyl ether. Now what about this one, CH3, CO, CH3? How can we draw the Lewis structure for that compound? So this is a ketone. Ketones have a carbonyl functional group, which looks like this. There's a double bond between a carbon and an oxygen. So the carbon in the middle has the carbonyl functional group. And whenever oxygen has two bonds, it's going to have two lone pairs. And we have a CH3 on the right side and on the left side. So there's three carbons. Instead of calling it propane, it's called propanone. The O and E 
This suffix is for ketone. How about this one, CH3OH? So here we have an alcohol functional group. One carbon is methane, but this is called methanol. So we have the suffix OL for an alcohol. So we have a carbon attached to an oxygen that is attached to a hydrogen. The carbon has three hydrogens, it's a CH3, and the oxygen has two lone pairs. So that's how you can draw the Lewis structure of an alcohol. Now what about this structure? Instead of seeing OH, what if you see HO? How is it different? So this functional group is an aldehyde. Whenever you see CHO, it's an aldehyde. And it contains a carbonyl functional group like the ketone. But the only difference is the carbonyl group is at the end as opposed to the middle of the structure. So how can we draw the Lewis structure for this aldehyde? So we have two carbons. We know the last carbon has the carbonyl functional group. And the hydrogen is not attached to the oxygen, but it's attached to the carbon. And then the other carbon has three hydrogens. So to name it, this is called ethanol, with a suffix of al for an aldehyde. The common name is acetaldehyde. Now what about this structure? CH3COOH. How can you draw the Lewis structure for this? So here we have a carboxylic acid functional group. To name this structure, there's two carbons. So instead of calling it ethane, it's going to be ethanoic acid. That's the IUPAC name. The common name is acetic acid, which is found in vinegar. Now to draw it, there's two functional groups here. We have the carbonyl group and we have the hydroxyl group, which is an OH group, which we can draw like this. Both oxygens contain two lone pairs. And of course we have the CH3 on the left side. So that's how you can draw the Lewis structure for acetic acid. Now what about this one? CH3 C O O C H three. So this is called an ester. So we have two carbons. The first carbon is a CH three. The second carbon is attached to two oxygen atoms. And then the second oxygen has a CH3. So it looks like this. And each oxygen has two lone pairs. So this is an ester. So this portion right here is the ester functional group. So how can we name this ester? So the left side, which includes the two carbons and the two oxygens, that is the acetate group. Also, it can be called the ethanoate part. And this side here, that's just methyl. So this is called, when you combine it, methyl ethanoate. That's how you can name an ester. Now what about CH3, CH2, and H2? How can we draw the Lewis structure? And what type of functional group do we have? So this is called an amine. Whenever you see the functional group R and H2, this is an amine. So you can call it ethoamine. because on the left side we have an ethyl group, which is two carbons. So to draw the Lewis structure, we have a carbon attached to another carbon attached to a nitrogen atom. 
Now the first carbon has three hydrogens. The second carbon is a CH2, so it has two hydrogens. And the nitrogen also has two hydrogens. But it also has a lone pair. Typically, when you see nitrogen, it usually has three bonds and a single lone pair. But this is how you draw the Lewis structure for ethyl amine. Now, what about CH3, CO, and H2? Feel free to pause the video and draw the Lewis structure. Whenever you see CO and H2, this is an amide functional group. So the amide functional group has a carbonyl group and it also has an amino group. So we have a carbon attached to another carbon that has the carbonyl group next to an NH2 group or an amino group. The nitrogen has two hydrogens and one lone pair. The carbon on the left has three hydrogens. And so that's how you can draw the Lewis structure. Now to name it, there's two carbons, so instead of calling it ethane, it's replace the E in ethane with amide, so ethanamide. Now what about this one, CH3CN? Whenever you see a CN group, this is the functional group for a nitrile. And a nitrile has a triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen atom. So to draw it, let's start with a triple bond. Now since the nitrogen already has three bonds, we only need to add one lone pair to it. So since there's two carbons, it's called ethane nitrile. The common name is acetyl nitrile. When you hear the word acetyl or acetic, think of two carbons. So this is acetyl nitrile. Now what about this one, CH3CH2F? So if you see a fluorine, a bromine, chlorine, or iodine atom attached to a carbon, this is called an alkyl halide. Now keep in mind, whenever you have a halogen, it usually has one bond and three lone pairs, which we discussed earlier in this video. So we're going to have two carbons attached to a fluorine. The first carbon atom has three hydrogens, and the second has two hydrogens. And the fluorine, which has one bond, has three lone pairs. And that's how you can draw the Lewis structure for this alkyl halide. So the common name is ethyl fluoride. The IUPAC name is fluoroethane. We really can't say one fluoroethane because it can only be on one of the carbons. You can't draw two fluoroethane. It's not possible. Whichever carbon the fluorine is going to be on, it's going to be carbon one. So this is just fluoroethane. Now let's say if we have the name 3-ethyl dash 2,4 dash dimethyl hexane. How can we draw the line structure for this compound? So the first thing we should do is draw the parent name. Hexane means that we have six carbons. Two, three, four, five, six. On a carbon three, we have an ethyl group which represents two carbons. And we have a methyl on f two and another methyl on four. So that's how we can draw the line structure of 3 ethyl 2 4 dimethyl hexane. By the way, how many primary hydrogens do we have? And how many secondary hydrogens and tertiary hydrogens? How can you figure that out? So 
To answer a question like that, you need to be able to determine which carbon atoms are primary, which ones are secondary, and which ones are tertiary. The carbons at the end, which are the CH3s, those are primary carbons because they're only attached to one other carbon atom. So these are all primary carbons. The carbon atoms that split off into three directions are tertiary carbons. So this carbon is tertiary because it's attached to three other carbon atoms. So here we have another tertiary carbon and this one is tertiary. Now this carbon atom is secondary because it's attached to two other carbon atoms. So this one is also secondary. So if you want to find out how many primary hydrogens there are, you can count it. A primary carbon has three hydrogens attached to it. It's a CH3. So because we have five primary carbons with, and each of them has three primary hydrogens, five times three is 15. So there's 15 primary hydrogens. Now, the secondary hydrogens, they're associated with the CH2s. So as you can see, because the secondary carbons are attached to two other carbon atoms. For them to have four bonds, they must be attached to two hydrogen atoms. That's why it's a CH2. And since we have two secondary carbons, each with two hydrogens, we have four secondary hydrogens. Now, a tertiary carbon, which already has three bonds to carbon atoms, it only has one a hydrogen. So since we have three tertiary carbons, we have three tertiary hydrogens. So let's try another example. How would you draw the line structure of 2, 2, 3, 3 tetramethyl pentane? So like the other one, this one is not bad. We can start with the parent chain, which pentane has five carbons, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have two methyls and a carbon 2 and two methyls on carbon-3. So you can also draw it this way. So that's it for that example. Now let's say if we have three isopropyl dash four sec butyl octane. So to draw octane we have eight carbons, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now on three, we have an isopropyl group. An isopropyl group looks like this. And on four, we have a sec butyl group, which looks like this. And that's how you can draw it. So you need to be familiar with certain substituents. So this might be a good time to review it. So this is a propyl group. It has three carbons. An isopropyl group, it splits off into two directions. So you usually end with two CH3s. That's an isopropyl group. We still have a total of three carbons outside of the parent chain. Isobutyl looks like this. One, two, three, four. It splits off into two directions. Isopentyl looks like this. One, two, three, and then four, five. Secbutyl, that's normal butyl is just four carbons. That's butyl. For sec butyl, you're going to attach it to the secondary carbon. This carbon is secondary before you connect it. Once you connect it, it's now tertiary. But if you don't count this attachment, you're attaching it to the secondary carbon, and so it's called sec butyl. This is a tert butyl group. Before you connect it, this carbon is tertiary. So this structure is the tert butyl group. So make sure you're familiar with uh, those common names. Now, how would you draw the Lewis structure of 2-pentyne? So if you see Y and E, it's an alkyne. So pent, that's five carbons. And on a carbon 2, which really is between 2 and 3, you're going to have a triple bond. So that's how you can draw 2-pentyne. Now what about 2-bromyl-dash- 
3 chloro. Let's say heptane. How can we draw the structure for this one? So heptane has seven carbons, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have a bromine on carbon two, a chlorine on three, and that's it for this one. Now what about three chloro dash two methyl dash one hexene? So feel free to pause the video and try this example. So let's start with the hexene part. Hexane has six carbons, but hexene, we have an alkene. That means we have a double bond. And it's on carbon one, which means it's between one and two. On carbon three, we have a chlorine. And on a carbon two, we have a methyl. And so this is the Lewis structure for 3-chloro-2-methyl-1-hexene. So what if we wanted to draw trans-3-hexene and cis-3-hexene? How would you do it? So let's start with hexene, which has six carbons. The double bond is between 3 and 4. This is trans because the hydrogens are opposite to each other. To draw the cis version, you want to draw it like this. So now the hydrogens are on the same side. So that's how you can draw cis and trans uh, 3 hexene. Now, what if you want to draw cis and trans? let's say 1,2-dimethyl-cyclohexane. How would you do it? So cyclohexane is a ring with six carbons. So it looks like this. That's cyclohexane. And the two methyl groups can be cis or trans with respect to each other. So for it to be cis, they need to be on the same side on the wedge or on a dash. So because they're both on the wedge, this is the cis isomer. To draw the trans isomer, one is going to be on the wedge and the other is going to be on a dash. So this is on the wedge, this is on a dash. If it's on the wedge, it means that it's coming like out of the page towards you. It's in the front. And if it's on a dash, it's like going into the page, or it's behind it's behind the page. So it's moving away from you. So this is the trans isomer. And this is the cis. Now what about this one? Let's say if you have two amino dash three ethoxy dash four hydroxy dash five methoxy dash six oxo and then heptanoic acid. How would you draw the Lewis structure? Now the reason why I wrote out uh, this long name is so you could be familiar with the substituents amino, ethoxy, hydroxy, methoxy, and oxo. So heptanoic acid tells us that we have a carboxylic acid functional group. And heptane um, is associated with seven carbons. So this is going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on the first carbon, which will make it the carbon on the right, this is the carboxylic acid. The carboxylic acid has the highest priority out of all the groups listed. So therefore, that means that this is carbon 1. And so carbon 2 is the next carbon. We have an amino group on carbon 2. An amino group is simply an NH2 group. 
on carbon-3, we have an ethoxy group, which is an ether, but with an ethyl. So we're going to have an oxygen attached to an ethyl. So it's OCH2, CH3. That's an ethoxy group. A hydroxy group is basically just an OH. That's on carbon-4. And on carbon-5, we have a methoxy group. So instead of being OCH2, CH3, it's simply OCH3, because CH3 is methyl. And CH2, CH3 is ethyl, so ethoxy versus methoxy. Hopefully, you see the difference there. And on 6, we have an oxo group, which is a ketone. It could be an aldehyde, too. So that's an, an oxo group. And so that's how you can draw the structure. So now you know what an oxo group is, what a hydroxy group is, an amino group a methoxy group, that's an O with a methyl, and ethoxy, that's an O with an ethyl group. So that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.